Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. May Elise Cannon. Today is Sunday, February 25th. Today is the 142nd day um, since October 7th. Um, I don't know about you, but today, uh, Sunday, Sabbath, um, I'm finding it difficult not to be a bit overwhelmed by how desperate how desperate the situation is um, in Israel, in Gaza, um, with all that has happened since October 7th, with uh, the death toll of civilians in Gaza, um, with the atrocities of the Hamas attacks. So many families, tens of thousands of people are burying their loved ones, or even worse, their loved ones are being buried in, a, in mass graves where they don't know where their loved ones are in Gaza. Um, Israelis and foreigners uh, are holding on to the hope that the remaining 100 hostages might still be alive and that there's hope that after 142 days, they might um, be able to be returned home alive and safe. Um, they're desperate in their pleas in that regard. More, more than 1 million people in South Gaza, in Rafa, and the whole population of the Gaza Strip, 2.3 million people, continue to live under daily bombardment, uh, bombs, munitions that, in large part, many of them are made right here in our own country. And today, Israel, um, the Israeli Association for uh, Rape Crisis Centers came out with a report on how violence against women um, was a tactic that was employed in the attacks of October 7th, um, mentioning atrocities that are too grotesque, uh, and horrific to describe. Um, and Palestinian women have also petitioned the United Nations to address attacks against women in Gaza as well. Women and children have always been those the most affected and brutalized by war and conflict, the greatest victims. And so the situation's desperate. And I feel like the only appropriate response is to cry out to God. In prayer, um, in desperate relief, calling for relief, calling for a ceasefire, an end to violence, I, I know I say that over and over and over again, an alternative to the violent ways of this world. And when I was thinking about what to share today, and as I was feeling uh, incapacitated, um, I was thinking that prayer uh, prayer um, is something that's so powerful. And um, sometimes we also feel inadequate in our prayers. And so in not knowing how to pray, we certainly can pray the Lord's Prayer, or we can pray that God would give us energy and strength, which is certainly appropriate. But I thought I would talk for a moment today about a spiritual practice you may be familiar, that of breath prayers. Um, I was taught about this uh, in seminary as a spiritual discipline. I wrote about this in a book called Just Spirituality, How Faith Practices Fuel Social Action that I wrote several years ago. Um, a breath prayer is a short verse. It can come from the Bible or it could be a phrase that's repeated over and over again as a prayer that is submitted to God. Um, and I wrote about breath prayers in a chapter in this book, Just Spirituality, that I was writing about Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who's a German theologian, a philosopher. Um, he was a pacifist prior to World War II. He did not believe in the use of violence, um, at least not initially, until he began to understand the horrors of the Nazi regime. And then he became an interventionist, um, believing that sometimes in the most horrific of situations, when all other alternatives have been pursued, um, intervention with violence can be necessary. And I'll talk in a different update about pacifism and just war theory and um, interventionism. But Bonhoeffer, as a theologian and a pastor, he um, prayed breath prayers. And for many activists, and um, our lives move at a fast breakneck pace, and breath prayers are a practice that can help us to slow down. Um, they can help us to acknowledge that God is the one in control. And it's an appropriate way of us observing Sabbath and rest and being reminded that God is in control and that we are not. And breath prayers can be a means of focusing our attention on things that are close to the heart of God, justice, mercy, compassion, um, the good news of the gospel, personal righteousness. Breath prayers can include a passage of scripture or they might be a thought or idea that God has put on your heart. They could include things like speak, Lord, your servant is listening or come, Lord Jesus, come. Um, expressions can be short, focused thoughts that help to draw our attention to God. The idea of a breath prayer is that it can be used to continually return our hearts and minds to being centered on, on God. And when you wake up in the morning, um, you can begin your day with a moment of silence. And when a breath prayer is something that you're praying, you can begin your day with it um, and pray it throughout the day. And then the idea is to lay your head, you know, down at night, repeating this prayer. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening.
Come, Lord Jesus, come. Bonhoeffer believed that teachings about Christ begin in silence. And perhaps it's appropriate to take a few moments of silence and then say out loud the prayer that you've chosen. Um, And as you continue to go about your day, you can recall the prayer that has come to mind. But when you find yourself perhaps feeling distracted or discouraged or frustrated about something that's happened in the midst of the day, the breath prayer can help return your thoughts to being centered on things that are not of this world. You might hold the prayer for a day or a few days or a week or longer And these types of prayers give us fuel and energy for the actions that we feel called by God to take. And for me today, um, I've been feeling a lot of different things. I've been thinking, like, what breath prayer would I carry in my heart? Um, It might take me some time. I don't know yet. But some of the things that have been resonating are, come, Lord Jesus, we need you so desperately. Or, Lord Jesus, bring an end to violence, bombing, death, and destruction. It might be God, bring a ceasefire and an end to violence that will lead to a lasting peace. I feel like that's the cry of my heart. God, bring a ceasefire and an end to violence that will lead to a lasting peace. And another one is, Lord, heal the brokenness and hatred in my own heart. And it's okay to take time uh, for what resonates with your heart. Um, Eugene Cho, who is now the head of Bread for the World, talks about... uh, our own desire to save the world being overrated, <laughs> that God is not, that that the world is not ours to save. The world is God's to save. So perhaps the most <laughs> appropriate breath prayer for this moment by, might be God, come and save the world, save Gaza, save Israel, save the United States, save me. Um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer became a part of the resistance movement in Germany. He was actively engaged in opposing the Nazi regime Um, Ultimately, he was arrested for his involvement in a plot to assassinate Hitler um, and was taken to prison. And I tell more of his story in this chapter in Just Spirituality. um, And I talk about the power of prayer that centered him regularly, but prayer sustaining him in his activism. Um, And Christian obligation for Bonhoeffer demanded a life of obedience and discipleship while manifesting what he called the moral obligation to love. He called his students, he taught in a seminary to live out this principle in word and practice, teaching them to pray for their enemies, to persevere in times of trial and distress, to maintain their closeness to God through prayer and fellowship. And Richard Foster writes about Bonhoeffer's pious obedience in his book, Streams of Living Water. And he says, God had so built within Bonhoeffer such ingrained habits of virtue that he had the inner spiritual resources for appropriate action. I would love for that to be true uh, about me, that to have such ingrained habits of virtue that he had the inner spiritual resources for appropriate action. Bonhoeffer's faith practices fueled his social action. And Foster argues that Bonhoeffer's deeply pious spiritual discipline is what enabled him to survive imprisonment, suffering, and ultimately death at the hands of the Nazi regime. In prison, Bonhoeffer was comforted by the reminder of God's presence with us at all times. He reflected regularly on the Psalms, verses like Psalm 74, verse 16, that says, the day is thine, and the night also is thine. The day is God's, and the night also is his. And Bonhoeffer prayed a breath prayer, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth, 1 Samuel 3, 9. These reminders of the omnipresence and omnipotence of God brought Bonhoeffer comfort in fearful circumstances, in the midst of war, in the midst of being in prison, he acknowledged the power of God at all times, writing, even in sleep, we and I are in the hands of God or in the power of evil, but even in sleep, God can perform his wonders upon us or evil can bring us to destruction. Bonhoeffer confessed that his heart returned to prayer in a sort of desperation when bombing campaigns occurred during his time in prison. He said the heavy air raids, especially the last one, when the windows of the sick bay were blown out by a landmine. Bottles and medical supplies fell down from the cupboards and the shelves, and I lay on the floor in the darkness with little hope of coming through the attack safely. This led me back, quite simply, to prayer and to the Bible. And he emphasized the need to exhort to prayers in times of trouble during bombing campaigns when he was in prison, and was encouraged by Psalm 50's declaration that says, call on me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. And as Bonhoeffer's final days approached, he continued to diligently practice daily prayer and spiritual practices that helped him to stay connected to God. 
On April 9th, 1945, the same day as his death, Bonhoeffer led a prayer service for other prisoners who were with him. Only three weeks before the end of the war, Bonhoeffer was hanged on direct orders from Hitler himself. I hope we might be encouraged by his story of faithfulness, but today I hope most of all that we might just be able to take a few moments, touch our breath, and perhaps say a breath prayer that might return us to being centered before the presence of God.